Welcome to Pure Experiences. When you have found your goal, when you have found nothing, when you have known something, when you have known everything which is equal to knowing nothing, what remains to do in your life? Because the spiritual goal is the highest goal, nothing meaningful remains to do once you attain your spiritual goal, which is simply an illusion. As you came to know in the last part of this series, However, the intelligence is to stay in the world, stay as a human being, ordinary human being, to let the natural processes of the life run and complete their course and to redirect your self-seeking behavior into something more productive, something bigger than the selfish pursuit of some illusory goal. Your other option is to die, rot away in nothingness, but no intelligent person will pick it. Once you reach the highest goal, you will see that the self-serving life is not meaningful at all. Just like I said, there will be complete detachment. Sometimes it looks like depression, meaninglessness, and at this time, only one person can show you the way out, and you must have guessed it. It is your guide, your guru. Simply because he has done it all. He has gone through this stage also. So fully knowing that nothing is meaningful, nothing needs to be done, you pick up something which is worthwhile. Knowing fully that this person is an illusion, this doer does nothing and this observer simply observes everything unconditionally, you take up something which is somewhat meaningful. Knowing that everybody is my own form, everybody is one, their essence comes out to be one, whatever that is. Probably at this time you will not understand what I am talking about. But those who understand, they will see that those who are in darkness are also me. And probably I should have said that this episode is mostly for the seekers who are reaching their goal or who are already there, who find a vacuum in their lives, who are now freed from their seeking also, who find all these so-called spiritual activities a waste of time. So the only thing that remains is to bring out all other my forms from darkness, to do exactly that which my guide did for me unconditionally, selflessly. That is the only logical choice that remains. Why is your guide doing that? Because you can guess nothing else is meaningful. We see that others are suffering and then we try to cure that suffering. This decision can be called your compassion, your kindness. There is no other option but to become compassionate and kind. This is how your real nature is. What else can you become? So when you see somebody suffering, you simply extend a little bit of help and there are no rules about it. It can be very mild, a little bit, or you can jump into it at a war footing as if this is the most urgent need in the universe. But most of the seekers, they are somewhere in between. The only error that can happen here is that you can assume that this is really needed. You can take it too seriously. That is the only error that can happen. So seeing that everything is a play, you play the ultimate play. This is the final level in the game of life. But there is another way that is not complete destruction or wasting that can be called ceasing to be, which means complete dissolution, extinguish the flames completely. However, that means there is nothing more to talk about. So we assume that a seeker will take the path of service once his or her individual goal is achieved or some kind of maturity appeared. This will be a natural consequence. So this can be called bodhisattva tendency, which means a tendency to bring all the creatures out of suffering, to make them progress. It does not mean that you are trying to convert them into your spiritual path or you are forcing them to be something else which they are not. No, it simply means helping. You see what they want, you try to fulfill that need. It is very simple. That is why it is called service. 
Now the question is who needs your service? And at first you can make this beginner's mistake that this is the biggest job in the world. There are so few people who are in spirituality and only a handful people in the world who are doing the job of a guide. The supply is very less compared to the demand, so everybody needs it. There will be a crowd of people demanding your service, wanting your service, but again this is spiritual field and things are sometimes exactly opposite of what we expect reality is stranger than our imagination you will be surprised to see that no one is interested in your service nobody wants truth nobody wants knowledge nobody wants these useless practices of closing your nose and sitting in a cave somewhere in a mountain any intelligent person will laugh at you they will call you crazy or they will call you fraud because obviously in this world nobody does any service or any job without expecting something in return remember the word service is now corrupted which means a job for which you need to pay something the service does not mean selfless help these days if you are running a service that means you are earning a lot of money that's why you are serving so as soon as you offer your services you will find nobody wants them people ridicule you people will insult you they will simply run away if you <laughs> try to speak anything which is remotely spiritual and i am also talking about newcomers here the so called budding seekers they also won't take you seriously because you are nobody your name is not on the bookshelves you are not on tv your channel has zero subscribers nobody wants to listen to you so this is the first difficulty that uh, you will encounter and you will see something strange that people prefer ignorance people prefer imaginary stories people prefer captivity obedience to something powerful and people obviously prefer materialism they want materialistic things so you will be left with very few options your dreams of serving will go down the drain even your mother will refuse to listen to your lecture on spirituality there will be handful of people who will understand you and obviously there will be other seekers so you will need to find these people the service becomes a very difficult job actually it becomes a challenge because there is nobody to serve and here also the only one comes for your help which is your own guide ask your guide how to start on this new journey of post enlightenment life and there will be some tips and tricks that your guide will tell you he will put you under him as an apprentice he will train you in the art of knowledge dissemination or service and slowly those who are worthy will start approaching you you should be able to discern who is worthy who is not i should add one thing that you should never do this service without taking the permission of your guide it can cause a little bit of trouble for you and it is there is a possibility that it will harm these people whom you are teaching or telling something which they are not ready to hear so first you should take the permission of your own guru and work under the wings of the guru for some time then the guru himself will let you fly do your own adventures so you will need to find the worthy ones the quality of a worthy seeker who is ready to take the teachings is that they are interested they are ready they don't want anything else except the teaching except their progress and they are madly after their spiritual goal you can see them they are highly curious open minded they are ready to do the difficult job of studying and practicing and uh, most importantly they recognize you as their guide they accept you as their guru this person can be called ready to receive they are in a receiving posture and your efforts your service will be fruitful here so although we call it service but it is not for everyone this is another paradox of spirituality that you say i am serving but 99% of the time you will find yourself refusing people simply because they are not worthy the word worthy is somewhat unfortunate in modern time because it sounds really arrogant 
when we say that you are not worthy it simply means the person has not matured to that point that they can be trained or taught anything it is not dependent on age or anything else even education or intelligence it totally depends on what qualities that person has these are called qualities of a seeker and this is a big subject about which i have already said in detail if you are interested you recognize the worthy ones from their qualities and they will recognize you as their means to reach their goal spiritual goal and that will show up as love and respect for you they will admire you and they will request to be served they will ask for it even if you refuse them in the beginning they will come back so you will need to devise some tests to find who comes back who really wants and who is simply wasting your time what will you get in return of the service what can you expect and the answer is very obvious absolutely nothing you will not get anything in return of your spiritual service that is why it is called service actually the returns are sometimes negative you will need to spend a lot of time effort in teaching you will make a lot of enemies if you don't go carefully as per your instructions of your guide sometimes you will get only insults and ridicule there was a time when the teachers and gurus were placed higher highest actually in the hierarchy of things nowadays they are in a very bad condition as soon as people hear that you are serving you are giving away something they will try to take advantage of you they will try to extract as much as they can from you rarely anyone will appreciate what you are doing they will doubt you they will brand you as fraud fake and uh, criminal enemy of their values their society and their religion a guru who exploits everybody takes advantage of women brainwashes children and so on that much you can easily expect in return these issues will be faced by many people i am not saying it will be really serious and dangerous situation but uh, you get this for nothing you get all this negativity even if you don't deserve it so go there in the field of service with zero expectations fully knowing that anything can happen in this world this world is not built for service remember this thing it has to be totally selfless totally unconditional and even after that you will pay the price for serving if you become selfish if you demand something in return well the destruction of your service is absolutely guaranteed probably you will lose the support of your own guru however again there is a paradox here that people will find it absolutely normal that this fellow who calls himself a spiritual person is demanding money actually they are convinced that uh, this is how everybody is so they are not surprised when somebody is doing selfish actions in the name of service so all gurus are fake and they laugh and they move on the fakeness is accepted in the society because many of them are like this it is normal in the society corruption is normal however these people worldly people are really surprised when somebody is actually serving selflessly but still they ignore and continue with false accusations as if nothing has happened and that is for your good actually you should not become a matter of controversy you should not be in limelight for anything at all so you will learn as you serve and at this point if you take your service very seriously you will experience discomfort although since you are a senior seeker it will mean nothing but it will look like a failure that everything was meaningless my guru told me that service is meaningful you should do it and now this also failed so it can look like a complete failure from all angles and that is why very few people are capable of serving just like only a worthy person receives knowledge or spiritual teaching only a worthy person is told to teach or serve this is not a cup of tea of everybody now you can appreciate the other options which few intelligent people take which is complete dissolution probably they tried these things we cannot blame them 
so although it is very difficult it is also very entertaining play think of it as a play if you think of it as something else you will suffer you will pay the price if you don't have a guru who is alive nobody can advise you if you are doing it under the guidance of a guru probably many of these practical issues can be avoided so what will be effects of service will it be good for me or not this is coming from ignorance this is the ego asking what do i get what happens if i serve so the only logical answer is do not expect any effects of service nobody becomes enlightened nobody gets knowledge even you don't have knowledge even you are nothing so nothing comes out of service in a meaningful way nothing happens which is meaningful from the point of view of this person or this ego at least you can say nothing worldly will happen sometimes you will see changes in you yes that is the law here that if you go and change something or somebody outside the greatest change that will happen will be within you inside you will see that your progress has accelerated you are growing faster now whatever little impurities you had got burnt away now whatever little expectations and feelings of superiority you had all gone burnt you will come to know that you still had some impurities left as soon as you start teaching you will come to know your errors you will come to know holes in your own knowledge because sometimes you won't be able to answer some difficult question sometimes you won't be able to handle a difficult situation and that will give you tremendous amount of teaching so those who teach they learn most this is another paradox so sometimes your guru will prescribe teaching as a practice as soon as you're ready for that even if you're not on the final step you will be given some service work to do and consider yourself very very fortunate because from here on your progress will be like a rocket we don't know what is the effect of service but you will get accepted into the guru field you will become the part of the system that we talked about in the very first part of the series in the system of spirituality you will become somebody who spins the wheel of truth now these words are really big but it is just hard work let me tell you you do not become somebody grand and big you become another cog in the machinery of spirituality probably you like this sentence more again this mysterious guru field shows up here what is it is it okay to become a part of it it is a mystery because it is not in front of you right now and will reveal the mysteries of guru field in the next part